again, everybody. Welcome to this edition of Inside IU Volleyball with head coach Sherry Dunbar. I'm Greg Murray. Coach, the very first Big Ten weekend of the season for the Hoosiers, Michigan and Michigan State. Started off 0-2 on the Big Ten season Friday night against the Wolverines in Ann Arbor. A four-set defeat, but the score didn't really tell the story. It seemed a lot more close than what the score showed. The Hoosiers showing excellent signs of progress. Yeah, I think in three out of the four sets, we were ahead by five or six points at different times. And I think when we really followed the game plan about how aggressive we were going to be with our first ball touch, whether it was our serving or our passing, um, I thought we could run a lot of the things we wanted to run and we can take Michigan out of system and that really helped us a lot. Prior to going on uh, this road trip, you made some comments to me that this week of practice, mm -hmm. primarily later in the week, was the best that you've seen mm -hmm. the team and you saw the spurts that IU put on, particularly in the set that they beat the Wolverines in set number two, 25-16. That was the best that we've seen the team all season long. Yeah, I think last Thursday I said, and I even tweeted about it, it was probably our best practice in a couple of years. Um, we haven't seen that team. And, you know, I told him, I said, I'd check to make sure you had on Indiana gear, you know, in practice because they were so good. I mean, that team could do some significant things in the Big Ten this year. So I think now the challenge is to get that team um, number one, to feel that pressure in practice and to be able to transfer what they did in practice into gameplay. And I think that's our biggest challenge right now is not leaving it in the practice gym. And, you know, if anyone deserves it, I think our kids do because it's there. So you don't want them to leave it there, you know. So that, that's our challenge and that's what we've been focused on and talking about and trying to figure out answers to. A big difference in that match roster-wise was the uh, addition, the first time we see Whitney Granado mm -hmm. in the lineup came in in the middle of that first set, wasn't sure how exactly she would be used this weekend with the team, but the first time we see her in 2012 play, after everything she's gone through, really nice for the senior setter to be out there again. Yeah, and I didn't have an intention to play her, but she had practiced on Thursday for the first time and, and got through practice and, and seemed to be feeling pretty good over the weekend and practiced with us just to serve and pass on uh, Friday morning at Michigan. and. And so we were down six or seven points in that first set. And Katie wasn't doing anything wrong by any stretch of the imagination, but it just felt like we needed a little lift and, and put, put Whitney in. And she ended up playing the rest of the match and, and doing really well. And then I talked to her on Saturday morning, and she said she's never been that sore in her life. So, you know, she really hasn't done anything since mid-July. So to, to go in and play a four-set match, basically, in the Big Ten, and after not doing anything, um, it was kind of a jolt to her body, I think. She came in, got 37 assists in that match against the Wolverines. Double figure kills was Jordan Haverly and Kelsey Marshall. Sam Thrower hit 400 in that match. Some very good offensive numbers for Indiana. Well, yeah, and I, I was really happy with Jordan's performance, not just how she played. I thought that was one of her best performances so far this year. But I thought she was also a very good leader on the floor and, and was kind of that calming presence that we talked about uh, with passing and defense and everything and just the way she communicated with the players. So. Um, it was really fun for me to watch her play in that match. That was uh, the old Jordan of sorts, you know, and, and how she played and how she competed. And, and I hope to see that many more times. The next night against the Michigan State Spartans, uh, a three-set defeat uh, to Michigan State, the first ranked opponent that Indiana has played so far this season. And they're a very, very physical and athletic team. And that's mm -hmm. something that you really harped on talking to me before the match, and they really exploited that throughout the match. Well, I thought Michigan State played great. You know, when you get done, you're disappointed. But when I really look back at that film and we talk about Michigan State, they, they played at a very, very high level. They hit 400 as a team, and, and I think they were probably a little mad. They lost to Purdue the night before, 17-15 in the fifth, mm -hmm. and they came out with that type of mentality, and um, you have to give them credit. I mean, that, that was a high-level performance by a Big Ten team on Saturday night. Um, so, you know, we can look at all the things we did wrong, and, and we will, but we also have to give credit when, when a team plays like that, and I thought they played it at, at a very high level and were very fun to watch that was on their the, side. That was the first ranked team that Indiana is going, or that ha they have played mm -hmm. by it. No means is that the last that they're no. going to play just every week. Yeah. The level of play in this conference, no question about it throughout <laughs> the country. That's the first time you've gotten yeah, to see a lot of it. Yeah, and seven, seven ranked teams in the top yeah. 25, two more receiving votes. I mean, that's nine out of the 12 teams exactly. right there. It's going to be that every single weekend. It's brutal. But it's, uh, you know, we talked about it after. 
Um, every one of our players and every one of our coaches chose to be at this level. It's the toughest conference in the country and you have to enjoy it and you have to embrace it um, because it's going to be that way every weekend. And so we choose to embrace it. And we told our kids they have to choose to embrace that type of level. And we have to be able to handle that pressure at Michigan. You got students right behind the bench, just nonstop screaming. Yeah. I mean, it's a loud, intense environment, but it also gives you chills because it's fun. You know, I mean, that's what you expect in the Big Ten and, and, and you deserve, you know, these teams are high level teams. And so I love that part of it. Um, so we just need to embrace it a little bit more, I feel like. Going with the crowd starting off in the Big Ten on the road, how do you think your players adjusted to that atmosphere, particularly the younger players with not as much experience, like Amelia Anderson, Courtney Harnish, the type of freshman that got in? How, how do you assess their play just mentally handling the atmosphere? You know, honestly, when I look back at the freshman's performance against Michigan, I thought Courtney Harnish did a very good job. She served some some runs for us, you know, serving some short balls and some deep balls and taking them out of system. Um, I thought Amelia went in and just swung away at some balls. So uh, Katie did a fine mm -hmm. job when she was in there. So I, I don't really think it, you know, obviously you think about it, I'm sure, but they didn't show it in their action and their body language. And I thought they handled it very good. I think the upperclassmen did a good job of sitting down with them prior to starting the Big Ten and just being like, look, this is exciting. This shouldn't feel like, oh, no, it's the Big Ten. Like, this is exciting. You've been waiting to do this for how many ever years you've been committed to Indiana. So enjoy it. Don't look at it as pressure. You know, let the upperclassmen kind of handle the pressure of playing in the Big Ten and, and you just go out and play your game. And I thought that was very good for the upperclassmen to kind of take that on with the freshmen. And I thought the freshmen handled it very well. You mentioned Katie uh, playing not as much as we're used to seeing because Whitney came in. Whitney got her first start of the season against Michigan mm -hmm. State, came out after the second set. Was that more of a strategy move or just a fatigue or a combination of oh, both? A little bit of both. I, I think Whitney was struggling a little bit. You know, that is fatigue two nights in a row. And, and I think even mentally it was fatiguing for her. And so we put Katie in, but the great thing is, I thought that Katie really learned from watching Whitney at Michigan and came in and was more vocal and more mm -hmm. engaged with the hitters and trying to do some of the things. And I told her, I said, it's a great learning environment for you if you take it that way. And when Whitney is playing, that you look and see some of the leadership qualities she has and how she's running the floor and how she's doing things like that, because Katie hasn't had that option yet. You know, she was just kind of thrown into the gauntlet and mm -hmm. started her first match, yep. you know, here at Indiana. So. You know, you have to, she's going to play some, Whitney's going to play some. They're going to battle it out now, which is great. Uh, but they need to learn from each other, and especially Katie learning from someone that's done some great things for our program in her three and a half years she's been here. After this Michigan State match, I caught up with a very tired Whitney Granado and talked to her about her first play in 2012. Your center, Whitney Granado. Whitney, your first play in 2012 this weekend. How's it feel to be back out on the court? Yeah, it was really great to just get back and kind of get going again. And I couldn't have been happier to, to be on the court again. So it was a lot of fun. And as a senior being on the floor, what kind of leadership role do you try and bring? You did off the bench to begin this season, now out on the floor. What kind of leadership and energy do you try and bring to the team? Honestly, you know, I just try and do my best to elevate everyone else's play and kind of bring them confidence and see what I can do for them. And so it's more about the team and what I can do for them. And I think that's my goal when I get out on the court. And with a freshman, Katie Gallagher, starting the season as a setter, how have you been with her mentor, the experience that you bring to the table, her being in her first collegiate season? Yeah, Katie's actually my little sister also, so it kind of worked out really well. And she's exactly how I was as a freshman. You know, she's a little quieter and stuff and is just a great player, so it's been fun watching her grow and kind of get her into that leadership role as a setter and not being afraid to to not be a freshman almost, you know, and to really lead the team and use her leadership skills. And so we're really trying to work on that and her just being confident and instilling confidence in everyone else. But she's doing a great job and I couldn't be prouder of what she started this season as. And you, your first weekend here in 2012, I'm sure you're very exhausted physically. Just how are you feeling? Not, not too much <laughs> practice time with the team, just jumping right in there. How are you going? You know, I think I kind of feel like the girls did in preseason. I ice tub today and I feel a little bit like an old lady, but you know, I'll take it. So it's, it's been totally worth it. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Whitney Granato, very tired, worn out, just getting out of the shower after that Michigan State match. She wanted to be that clear with her hair all up in the bun, wanted to make sure that everyone knew that.
girls. I know, <laughs> you know. Yeah, she spent some time in ice baths at Michigan State and, and doing some things. And I talked to her this morning. Uh, it's Monday morning. I talked to her this morning, and, and she was still going down to get in an ice bath this morning. So she's gonna, you know, she's gonna have to build her tolerance back mm -hmm. up and the conditioning side of it, and you know, and she'll get there. <laughs> now, looking forward to this weekend, Illinois and Northwestern, the first Big Ten. A series at you, Jim, this season. Mm -hmm. Illinois one and one last weekend, but that's a team that started off ranked number seven in 2012 in the preseason, coming off of a national runner-up. But this is a team that, in the past, you guys have matched up very well against. Yeah, I'm excited about this weekend. Obviously, being at home is is a nice comfort zone for us, and especially when we talk about we. I thought we struggled a little bit with our serving and passing this past weekend, and when you play at home you do count on that being a little bit better because that's our gym and so there is a comfort level with, with first ball touches. So excited about that for our serving and passing. But um, Illinois is, you know, they might have lost some matches here in the preseason, but they're a very quality team. Mm -hmm. They lost a lot of their leadership and, and their two outside hitters that primary passers and all that. So people are getting a feel for, you know, the pressure, you know, that it takes to come in and start then right away after going and finishing second in the nation, you know, in the final four. So they're going to be very good. They're going to be very solid. Northwestern the same way. Uh, both pin attack type teams, you know, big outside hitters uh, that are going to take a lot of swings and right sides. So we're going to have to be able to defend the antennas this weekend, you mm -hmm. know, and, and not so much the middles, but more the antennas and, and then just really control our side. And, and a lot of it is just having that belief. We got to get over the hump. We have to get over the hump. We are a we are a good, solid team this year, and the kids have done a lot of work to get to this point. And I think once they get over the hump and we get a quality win, and that validates, I think, where they stand right now. So we're going to keep pushing and keep chipping away. Um, I know they use the analogy in, in the uh, weight room this morning. You know, there's a brick wall in front, and we just got to keep chipping away at it. And we're either going to take a sledgehammer or a spoon. You know, <laughs> we need to take the sledgehammer and just keep breaking through barriers right now and finding that way to um, not just talk about winning, but to find that success level and find um, the level that we're playing at in practice because that will be fun for people to see. Because on Thursday, I know we were all had goosebumps watching our kids play. So that's all we want for them is to be able to take that into the competition floor because that team is a great team. That match against the Fighting Illini of Illinois can be seen on BigTenNetwork.com at 7 p.m. And Saturday against the Northwestern Wildcats back on IUHoosiers.com also at 7 p.m. The Friday match on BTN.com. I'll be joined by former Hoosier Mary Shadoin. She'll be the color commentator for that match. Mary is working in the office with us this year, and um, I've been hearing about that match. So I'm excited that you guys will get to work together and you'll get to enjoy her personality. Uh, I told you just be careful she doesn't take over the whole show <laughs> because she loves that spotlight and she's going to be very good at it. I'm very excited for her, um, but it'll be hard for her to be to be kind of neutral in the middle, you know, but it, it, she'll do a great job and I know you guys will too. So, And happy birthday to oh, you. Well, thank Wanna you very much. Want to make sure we mention that big 22 today <laughs> and right. really happy that you're sharing it with us. All right. Well, thank you. And the broadcast on Friday with Mary, very exciting yeah. and most definitely very don't entertaining. Let, don't let her laugh on air. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'll say. <laughs> well, thank you for joining me on this edition of Inside IU Volleyball with Coach Dunbar. Good luck this weekend. Thank you.